So you can't fit that concert grand piano in your house. It's okay, we might have a solution. Today we look at two intermediate baby grand pianos from two of our favorite manufacturers. We're gonna listen to them and look at some of the features. Let us know what you think. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in downtown San Antonio, Texas. And I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, like our videos, sign up for notifications, leave us comments. We really love to interact with you guys. Ted. I don't have room for a concert grand piano in my house. It's okay. I think I have a solution. There are some amazing offerings right here behind you. Yamaha and Kawhi, two of the greatest brands up there with the names like Steinway, Baldwin, these, these brands that ooze value. And this Kawhi is the GL30, the Yamaha is the GC1. And uh, what I like about them is they're not complete entry line pianos. Mm -hmm. They play like professional grade pianos. And um, I invite people to play both of them. What I, what I will say is on the entry lines, the ones that are made in Indonesia that are not made in Japan, they seem to run just a few inches shorter mm -hmm. and they're more like a mass production type of piano, which is, which is great for beginners and in, in up to intermediate level. From intermediate to professional, even college professors, these baby grants, they, they sure do fit the bill. And there's a lot of value, like we, like we said, in this line because it is that step up from the, the, the beginner line. So there's the GB1 from Yamaha and there's the GL10. We've done videos on those, we've compared those two. Very, very popular instruments. They are both from Kauai and Yamaha. And they, like you said, they are produced at a higher volume out of their Indonesian factories. Those factories almost exclusively make beginner leveled instruments right. that are really high value but when you move over to Made in Japan, the, not only the price increases, but there's some really noticeable, amazing traits in these instruments and sitting and playing them, you really start to feel and hear those differences. And that's why we have them here today to put them up against each other because these are really highly asked for instruments when it becomes the intermediate player, that high school student um, or that student, the younger kid who's really advancing faster than his classmates. And I really think it's important to realize this is an expensive instrument. They're both expensive instruments, but it's like when you take the craftsmanship from being manufactured in Hamamatsu, Japan, and you look at the 10 to 15 years of peak primary, even beyond that, uh, the, these pianos are made for multi-generation. You divide that price by a year and divide that by 12. I mean, you're really paying just a matter of dollars to have this instrument over the course of 10, 12, or 15 years. And it, it's I mean, incredible. Skyrocket. It's incredible Player. because the value holds on too. Correct. So a lot of times we, we carry a lot of used pianos in our store. And when we see high-end used Yamahas and Kawais, they sell for almost what the new ones sell for. Uh, and it's pretty cool to see the value hold on and to say, hey, these are quality instruments and people are looking for these. And why is that? And so today we're looking at these two. The GL30 is a five foot five from Kawai. The GC1 is a five foot three. They're both very comparable pianos, but I do have a tendency and a preference toward the Kawhi because it has the, uh, um, the carbon fiber ABS Millennium 3 action in it. Yeah, so there are some differences. Like I said, the five foot three on the Yamaha and the five foot five from, from Kawhi, a couple inches, you get more soundboard, you get more string length. Um, those things really do come into effect when it comes to the overall sound of the instruments, the dynamic range you get a little bit more out of the Kawhi and the GL30. The GC1 and the GL30 have amazing actions. Like you just said, the Millennium 3 is one of those once in a lifetime actions, in my opinion. It's something that goes all the way in the GL10, all the way up into their SK Shiguru Kawhi lines. And it's really cool. We've done a video where we've pulled that out and looked at it. I hope we have some B-roll that we can show you guys right here. Um, but it's just beautiful. It's carbon ABS jacks and there's over a thousand pieces of carbon fiber in it what does the carbon fiber do it's more durable than wood it lasts longer it's lighter there's a whole bunch of it's benefits not affected to that. by humidity the keys won't swell the action won't swell and it won't push the felts up against one another inside the action components and those are really wonderful things to have on and the so piano. yeah so yamaha has been making pianos very similarly for a long time they have a, a winning formula 
it sounds great, but these two instruments really offer a lot. And we wanted to put them up against each other. I think Ted's excited to play these today. Um, so let us know what you guys think. We're going to take a listen here in a second.
could you tell a difference in the sound of these two pianos? Because playing them is just wonderful experience. They both sounded amazing. I'm not sure if it's the extra inches on the GL30, but I heard a little bit more resonance, a little bit more full tone out of it. So that the five foot five versus five foot three, that two inches might make a huge difference. But I also want to point out that the stretcher bar on this one is, is significantly larger. Um, that stretcher bar is actually what's holding together with your pin block onto the frame. Kawhi has this saying that they, they want to create energy out of their pianos and that sound energy is very important to them. And what is energy? It's a big wave. It's a big energy wave. And the more that gets lost in the frame or if it can't contain that energy, it's going to get lost in, out of the sound. And so it just it sounds a little bit more full to me, a little bit more rounder. Um, I heard a little bit more dynamic range out of the Kawhi from you. Um, the action, what did you, did you, was that part of the action? Uh, I don't know. It just seemed like the range of expression seems to be just a little bit wider. Uh, and I'm, I always attribute that to the carbon fiber, the ABS action in the, in the Kawhis. But the Yamahas play like, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, Yamahas are just dream instruments. It's, it, but it, it does seem like there's a little bit, a tad bit more of a timbre expression mm -hmm. range that, that you have on the Kawhi as opposed to the Yamaha. And again, that's size and is, th like that. is there a wrong answer between these two? Not really. I don't think so. I, th I, I think mean, that the takeaway for me was both of these would be amazing forever they, instruments. They are forever instruments. And, 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 and there's a range of things you can add on. Uh, on this GL30, we have a silent system on it. That is something that is available on both the Yamaha and the Kawhi. They have these silent systems. They have player systems that you can add on. There's just a lot of technology that's very cool that makes the piano more engaging. Well, the silent system, I can't say enough great things about it. The silent system on both of these pianos is something that anyone purchasing uh, a grand piano needs to seriously look at getting as an add-on. It's like if you go out and buy a brand new car and don't get the air conditioning because the, you can play the piano 24 hours a day in a household full of people with headphones on and no one really knows what you're doing except for you. We have a couple of videos on those silent systems, so make, make sure you check those out. But Ted, I think these were amazing sounding instruments. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to them. We really wanted to do a sound profile against these two. It's a, it's a question we get a lot. Should I be looking at Yamaha? Should I be looking at Kawhi? I think they both bring a lot to the table and it's a preference at the end of the day. Um, but we're really excited to show it to you guys. Thank you again for watching. This is Ted Barcelo. I'm Patrick Marr with Alamo Music Center. You can find us in San Antonio, Texas or online at alamomusic.com. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channels and check out our other videos. We love to hear from you guys, so feel free to leave some comments and contact us. Thanks.